What's going on everybody? It's Dan the Realtor back again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top three things that you want to avoid if you want to get your house sold this year. Let's run that intro! I get to it first, I got you mad. I guess that when I get to it last. Get it that I'm never going back. Get it that I'm never going back. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. What's going on everybody? Dan the Realty here, your local Montgomery County and Silver Spring real estate agent. But before we get into the video, I want you to do three things. I want you to like this video, I want you to smash that subscribe button, and I want you to share this video with anybody that you think may find it beneficial or think about either buying or selling a house this year. So let's get into it. If you've been paying attention to the market at all, you know that we have been in a time of turbulence and unpredictability. And actually, I think that unpredictability is just gonna be the new normal. We used to could predict the market every 10 years or so, we would have a change in the market and we could predict that the winter was gonna be a little bit slower and the summer was gonna be a little bit faster and the spring market and all these different things were very, very predictable up until the last two years. And if you've been anywhere in the country and you ain't been sleeping under a rock, you know that things are shifting super, super fast. Last winter, the market was on fire. This winter, looks like we're going back to the way it was back in 2017, 2018, 2019. That being said, we all know that interest rates have really pulled a lot of people out of the market. Now, more than ever, it's really important that you avoid these three mistakes if you wanna get your home sold this year. Mistake number one, not pricing your home appropriately. The housing market shifted in 2022, and from 2019 to about the beginning of 2022, if you had a house, you could pretty much put the joint on the market for however much you wanted. Somebody was gonna come along and buy it because interest rates were so cheap, and everybody was buying anything at that point. So as a homeowner, you could pretty much price it where you want it within reason, somebody was gonna buy it. Now, because money is much more expensive, interest rates have creeped up, the buyers are pulling back and getting way more analytical. What do you mean? I, I have a hundred dollars. Not anymore, you don't, poof. Before they just go out and bid the property up 50, 60, $70,000. The Black Friday sale is over. So you cannot price your property ridiculously high and expect that it's gonna sell in a super fast amount of time. It just ain't gonna work that way no more. We're not in that type of market anymore. But I know what you're saying. Well, Dan, I'm not just gonna give my house away. You don't gotta give your house away. We're not saying that. Nobody's saying give your house away for zero dollars. What we are saying is that you need to look at the market, see what's selling, see what's pending and see what's on the market right now and make sure that you're pricing your home within a reasonable range of all the properties with similar square footage, similar beds, similar baths, and similar style as your home. Greg McBride, the chief financial analyst at Bankrate says, price your home realistically. This isn't the housing market of April or May. Buyer traffic will be substantially slower, but appropriately priced homes are still selling quickly. If you price your home too high, you run the risk of deterring buyers. And if you go too low, you're gonna be leaving money on the table. That's why it's important to get with an experienced real estate agent who can help you navigate those waters. The second mistake that you want to avoid is keep your emotions in check. A lot of times we emotionalize our home because our kids grew up there was where you had your first, your first, your kid's first bath and you know, you built a swing outside and for many of us it was our first home, especially if you're a, a first generation home owner, there's a lot of emotion attached to our homes and we get it, don't get me wrong, I get it, but you cannot sell the emotions with your house because your buyer does not care that your kid took his first bath in your bathtub. We do not care. They don't really care. And that's just the bottom line. So you have to, uh, in a way, detach yourself from those emotions because at the end of the day, your buyer is just gonna be looking at the numbers. And if you have it overpriced because you're trying to sell your memories along with the home, you could be leaving money on the table by overpricing it and scaring off the buyers that want to buy your home. According to the National Association of Realtors, the time that the average homeowner has owned their home has increased from five years to 10 years. This is several years longer than the historical norm. The side effect is 
The longer you stay in your home, the more emotionally attached you are to the house. And for some homeowners, that can make it harder to negotiate. That could put you as a homeowner at a disadvantage to another homeowner who may be less attached and is more willing to negotiate with the next buyer. Because remember, when you put your property on the market, the only competition are the other houses that are on the market. So the homeowners that are willing to negotiate are going to have the advantage over those who cannot detach emotionally from the property and are super, super emotionally attached to the price that they get. That's why it helps to have a disinterested third party that can really help you rationalize your decisions. It can kind of break the numbers down for you so that they make sense. And the third mistake you want to avoid when you're selling your house is not staging your house appropriately. The biggest mistake that I see homeowners make when they put their home on the market is they go furniture blind. They go dirt blind. They don't see any of the dirt or the furniture. I go in the house, I'm like, you're going to leave that there. Yeah, the sofa's perfectly fine. <laughs> no, no, the sofa's not fine. The sofa's old. I'm telling you, your sofa's old, okay? I'm telling your sofa is old. Fine. You liked it, but buyers may not like it. And remember, when you're trying to sell your house, you want to put yourself in the mind of the buyers. You want your buyers, the future buyers, to be able to see themselves inside of your home. And that goes to what I call the three Ds. You want to declutter, deodorize, and depersonalize. A lot of times we live in our homes, we go odor blind, we go photo blind, and we go clutter blind. That's the benefit of having a professional stager come in and tell you, hey, maybe we may need to do a full stage, maybe we may just need to do a partial stage and reorganize some of your furniture, reposition it, declutter, depersonalize, and deodorize so that we can make sure that you're not leaving any money on the table when we put your property on the market. So if you're looking to put your house on the market this year, let's connect to help you navigate through the process while prioritizing these best practices. Like, subscribe, and share this video. Hit that notifications button so that you're the first to get notified when we drop new videos. I'm Dan, a realtor. If I don't have the business yet, I'm working hard to earn it.